Hey, this is Mike. I'm at Conway Ford in Conway, South Carolina, and I'm checking out the cutting edge of an American tradition, and that is the new Ford products. This is the 2016 Ford Fusion, and the Ford Fusion is a really good option for a lot of people as far as the size of a car and the features of a car, and uh, it's very economical as far as the fuel economy. But so let's check it out. This one does have 17 inch alloy wheels that are painted in the silver, uh, the same color as the vehicle. And here in the front, we have projector tube headlights with halogens powering those. And the styling of the Fusion is, to me, is pretty darn sharp. That whole front end that they have with the, the, the sharp lines on the hood coming down close uh, to that grill there, it kind of look gives it like a airplane or something look to me. And it must have good aerodynamics because it has a highway rating of 36 miles per gallon which is pretty good. Now it does have a 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine and a six speed automatic transmission. And there's gives you an idea of what's on the, the window sticker there. Now it does have the heated side mirrors and has this little section over here to, um, to help you avoid blind spots. Let's take a look at the passenger side. It does have the black interior and Everything's pretty much a, a matte black except for this area here, which is a little bit shiny. You got the power door locks there, power windows. There's a speaker there in the door. You also have a bottle holder and some storage space around it. The seats are really striking when you look at them. They have like a uh, wavy design there in the, in the center with some white stitching and it feels like a micro so, microfiber um, material that the, the seats are made out of. There's the glove compartment. It's pretty massive. Um, it's, got, it's got the compartment there at the top like a little shelf plus you have this uh, net here for quick access stuff. Check that out. We've got some space under there. Let's take a look at the back seats. Inside of the back door is the same as the front, basically, uh, as far as the styling and everything and quality. You do have now this seat here is all the way back, so you can see that it's um, not too bad on the leg room, but not huge. Now the, the driver's seat is more of a normal position, but you can see there's plenty of room now. And these back seats do have the center uh, armrest with some cup holders. You've got some vents back here for the back seat drivers, plus a power supply 12 volt down there. Now these seats do fold down, just in case you're going to Lowe's or something and you need some extra cargo space and less passenger space, you can fold them down and um, put stuff in there. Just make sure that the seat belt you can see it's, it's good letting you know you want to make sure that the seat belt is out of the way when you put the seat back up and make sure it snaps in place. All right. Looking at the back, you'll probably notice that it has the, uh, the single exhaust here, but it also has these parking sensors here across the back, these round circles. And those will alert you if you're backing up too close to something, it'll kind of beep at you and get your attention. There's the backup camera, so you can see exactly what it's actually beeping for. And then you have the EcoBoost badge and the SC there. There's where you put your gas in. Now it is a capless design, so don't go looking around for the cap that doesn't need one. You just put the nozzle in, put gas in it, and you're good to go. It does have a seal around here uh, to keep stuff out, but, um, but it is also designed 
to keep stuff out automatically uh, the way it's the way this door is and everything alrighty let's take a look here now the fun stuff stuff begins this is the inside of the driver's door where the where all the important stuff is so you got your power window controls your door lock controls are up here and your side mirror controls there you just have to choose which side you want and then you can adjust it here you can block out the uh, rear windows from being rolled up and down with that button there and then of course you got the bottle holder and the storage space in the door power adjustments on the driver's seat and you do have some lumbar adjustments here automatic headlamps with um, the, the ability to turn them off you can also have the parking lights regular lights and the automatics that portion there here's the dimmer switches here so you can adjust the brightness or dimness of the interior lighting and the dash so let me get the key out so you can take a look at it Here's the key. Has the Ford oval there. Plus it has your lock and unlock buttons and your trunk. Let's go ahead and look at the trunk now. Before I forget. So opening up the trunk, you just take and you double tap this button just like you would uh, double clicking a mouse. And opens up it gets to that point there and then all you have to do is lift it up the rest of the way and you can see it's a massive trunk especially considering you can fold those seats down there's your floor mats there in that bag you have the grocery bag holders there or you can also put a uh, cargo net there that's another use for those so this lifts up and then you've got a uh, spare tire donut in there now, definitely want to check, some manufacturers are not including a spare tire, so if um, you're buying a new vehicle nowadays, you want to make sure that uh, you're aware of whether it has a spare tire or not. You can also access the trunk using that button right there. Okay, so now sitting in the driver's seat, this is a brand new vehicle and it has this film over it and it says only the customer to be removed that. So we're going to leave it on there. So check this out. Push the button, this little thing flips out. That's the actual key. You can put that in the ignition and start up the vehicle. Alright, so now that we're doing the inside portion, I'm going to go ahead and move it into the shade to avoid the sunlight causing any more problems. There we go. Let me turn the fan down a little bit. So here's the steering wheel. It is a uh, kind of a grippy steering wheel. It does have a little bit of give to it and um, it has these uh, larger portions here so you can get a good grip and also when you have your thumb there it kind of keeps your hand from sliding up whole bunch of stuff here a bunch of buttons on the steering wheel so let's get started on that your cruise control is set is over here you can set it you make sure it's on and you can set it you can resume and you can cancel there on this side you have a volume button for your radio so you can turn your volume on up and down you can also change to the stations. Now, these, these buttons here are also for answering a call and hanging up on the call there. This is a voice recognition button. You push that button and you can uh, say certain commands. And um, so let me just show you that. Please say a command. Help. Main menu, say a device name, like phone, climate, USB, 
CD, or radio, to get help with a specific device, say the device name and help, like phone help. You can interrupt me at any time by pushing the voice button. Phone is always active, so you can say things like, call John Smith, to hear an introduction to your system, say voice instructions, for sync support, call 1-877-945-3648, or see the tips available at www.syncmyride.com. Main menu, say a command. Cancel. Canceling. Okay, so you get the idea. There is a lot of stuff that you can use the voice recognition for. It really is a good safety feature as well as a convenience feature because when you're driving along and you can, you know, basically just push that button and say certain commands and um, instead of, you know, looking around, trying to change the radio station, that kind of stuff. So uh, I think it's a really good fa safety feature and there's a little bit of a learning curve as far as learning the commands and stuff, but I think it's well worth it. Alright, so here's your gauges here, and um, so basically you just have an actual gauge in the center, and then to the right and left you have those screens there. So right now we're seeing uh, the distance still empty and the fuel that we have in the vehicle, which is not much. And on the right we're seeing the what the radio is doing, which is just the audio is off. So using those little screens, you see these little touch pads these little buttons right here on the right and left of the steering wheel and they correspond to the um, the screen that's on the left and right so I'm gonna just push uh, scroll down with the arrow just so you can see what happens it changes to an RPM gauge it changes that to uh, include also include the coolant temperature or you can go back to that mode on the right I'm going to scroll let's see go back and I'm going to go into say climate and go into there and I'm going to scroll through that so you can see that I'm adjusting that I'm going to go back out of that go into navigation okay so the, this vehicle doesn't have navigation so it's just showing that it needs to be added uh, entertainment climate so basically you get different uh, options there I'm going to go to entertainment again so that way you can set the screen, you can kind of customize it based on your preferences. And then you've got two customizable screens, which is pretty cool. All right, on this side you have a turn signal, you also for your dimming your headlights. On that side is for your windshield wipe washers and, and wipers. All right, over here is an eight-inch touchscreen, and like I said, it does have this uh, this film over it. So, you know, just ignore the war the, the film. Uh, hopefully, you could see it pretty good. Basically, there's your climate control there. Now, pushing the home button, I just want to show you. There's climate on this corner, entertainment, phone, and um, the nav. Uh, if you had navigation installed, it would uh, be on that corner. So it's really easy to just the four corners there. I'm gonna go into the phone and once you search you're, for sync on your device and select sync once it is found. Yeah there's no phone paired but once you did uh, have a phone paired in there you'd be able to see the contact uh, contacts and recent calls and all that good stuff. Uh, your entertainment Seven this would be the, the radio you do have Sirius satellite radio you have a CD player you can also play music through a USB device there's all kinds of different um, uh, ways of playing music through this uh, sound system. Let's go back home and then let's go to climate and then we're back to that screen we saw before. So it's really easy, uh, simple to use. You've got your four corners, four different um, you know topics and then you can go into more depth into each topic. And then you can always go back to the home screen by pushing that button. There is some settings that you can change but I'm going to keep it simple for you. CD player is there. Right in this place here, your volume control is there. Tune through the stations or your track. Eject the CD, change to the tracks there. Now this has a dual zone climate control, so the passenger can adjust there, separate from the driver. And you got your um, your rear defrosters and your front defrosters. You also have uh, an automatic setting to where you can just set the temperature, push auto, and just roll with it. Now under here is a, a pretty neat little storage area and it does have a 
see if you can see that. It does have a power supply there, so you can put your cell phone in there and plug it in, let it charge, and it's out of the way, and you just use it through the, uh, the Bluetooth system. That's one um, possibility of using that space. But I like the way you can kind of reach in there and, and you know access the stuff. That's a really cool feature. So here's the shifter, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in reverse to show you the backup camera. So that's a really clear image, and it's slightly uh, it's distorted. The reason why is because it's a wide-angle view camera lens back there to get you the, the, the largest view of behind the vehicle. So the reason why it has those lines is to let you know an estimated trajectory of the vehicle as you're backing up and the size of the vehicle. So if I turn it to the right, the steering wheel, I'm turning it now, you see those lines move uh, to kind of let you know you're going to be going in that direction when you back up. Now it is a an estimate, so it's, you know don't just put it in reverse and floor it and go backwards relying 100% on those lines, but it just gives you a general idea of how wide your vehicle is going to be as you back up and what direction you're going to be going as you back up looking at that screen. So I can continue on with the shifter, go down the neutral, I can go down the drive. Now I also go down to sport mode. So um, sport mode will focus the vehicle on performance um, a little bit more than you know economy. So that's what that's for. You can also change gears using these buttons here. Um, so plus, and let me show you right here. When I push the button, it changes from one to second gear. But if you keep pushing it, it's not going to let you go any more um, than it's not going to let you go out of a specific range because the vehicle is designed to the engine is designed to run at a certain RPM. So um, you know, for your benefit. So basically, that's what that does. Now it's useful if you're going downhill and you need to downshift a little bit to get some more engine braking. Um, to avoid using your actual brakes, um, that, that's a really handy thing to have. This is your parking brake. Uh, it is an electronic parking brake. So basically, you can pull it up to, to in, initiate the uh, parking brake. And basically what it does is squeezes the um, brake rotors and keeps the vehicle from moving. Just as exactly what it does when you push the, um, the brake pedal. Now this is electric, so it's different from the hydraulic system uh, that that you normally happens when you push the brake pedal. So it is a like a backup system, and you'll notice here it says brake. Now I'm going to push it down, and it releases the brake, and the light goes off. There's your cup holders. One is a little bit deeper than the other to accommodate different cup sizes. Here's your center armrest here, and it also is a. Um, whole bunch of storage area storage place it does have this little tray that you can take out and dump it and um, it is kind of rubbery on the inside of that tray it's pretty neat so in here you do have a power supply 12 volt you also have a USB and an SD card input and so therefore um, so like say the navigation they plug in an SD card in there and it will install the uh, the navigation into the system from what I understand all right so looking here the rear view mirror it's just kind of the standard um, style that flips up and down like that you got these lights here on both sides if you need like a, a quick light for something you can also turn them all all on like that uh, you can turn off the um, this is for turning off the rear windows like say if you if you don't want the rear windows to roll up and down I'm pretty sure that's what that's for of course you can turn to make sure the lights don't come on or have them on like that place to put your shades is here it is padded on the inside you also have uh, visors with mirrors and lights, which is cool. Same thing on that side. All right, let's take a look at that little engine. It is a, uh, a small displacement uh, engine, but it has plenty of power.
the um, the little latch is right here to the far right. So usually they're in the middle, but this one's to the far right. So there you have it, 1.5 EcoBoost engine, four cylinder, inline four. Covered up with plastic, of course, most of them are. So you get to see a little bit of metal. At least you get to see the belts and stuff. But anyways, there you have it. 2016 Ford Fusion SE at Conway Ford, Conway, South Carolina. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Also, if you have anything to add or anything I skipped over or got wrong, please leave that in the comments as well. If you're interested in one of these vehicles, uh, Conway Ford will be glad to help you. They are in Conway, South Carolina, which is very close to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And I know a lot of people go there on vacation. So if you're interested in anything uh, like this, let them know. I'll leave the uh, a link to their website and you can email them. You can set everything up before your vacation and come down and visit them and drive home in a new car. Anyways, I uh, appreciate you watching. If you could like, subscribe to my channel and, and share with your friends. And um, that's about it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.